On today's ChurchTechCast.com screencast show, creating a ticker for ProPresenter 5. Hi, and welcome again to the ChurchTechCast.com screencast show. This is the show where every week we talk all about using software in the church. My name is Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm your host. I'd love for you to ask your questions, by the way. I got the idea for this particular show by uh, just taking a look at the ProPresenter forums and looking for the feature requests that maybe we could hack and make happen. So it's questions that come my way, ideas, they're all helpful and I'd love to answer yours. So just leave your comment below the video in the comment section or uh, drop me a line over on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. So without further ado, let's head on over to, actually we're going to go to Motion first, then ProPresenter 5. So here we are in Motion. Now Motion is Apple's motion graphics program. It costs about 50 bucks in the App Store. And I think it's well worth it, especially if you don't have a background in um, After Effects, which is technically the industry standard. But this will work absolutely well for our purposes here. So. I have created a new project. This is uh, 1920 by 1080. That's how big this project is. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll some text. So first I click on this text icon over here. And I'm going to go all the way to the right. Now there's a... Um, actually first I'm going to scroll back to the beginning. And then I'm going to click all the way to the right. Now having done that I'm going to make sure that the text thing here under group is selected and we are going to go to click on format over here and scroll down to where it says text down here. I could type in up here but I'm not going to be able to see that because it's off the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just type in my stuff here and I'm not going to show you what I'm going to type because it's a bit of a surprise you're going to see it here in just a second so that's uh, thing one now what I am probably going to do because the way that we're going to do this this black here is transparent so I think that I need a little bit of something to bring it out. I'm going to add a glow, but I'm not going to do like a yellow glow. That's no good. What I want is a black glow. So let me do that. So technically not a, a glow, but it's going to separate it from the background anytime that I have a white background. So that's what I've got here. Now you might start to see what's going on here. Now let me add, go into the library, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to behaviors here. You can see I've already done this. And basic motion. And then down in basic motion there's one called throw. So I want to, on this special thanks here, I'm going to, oh, grab spin by mistake. I want to grab throw and put throw there. Now, if we go back to the beginning here and I hit play, you'll notice absolutely nothing happens. So what I need to do is grab the HUD, the heads-up display, and I need to tell it what direction to go because 
it just knows that I want it to go a direction. So I'm going to go this direction. So basically off to the left. And I'm going to watch this line as I do this here and go there and shut the HUD. Now you're starting to see what's going on here. This is a scrolling marquee where we're thanking our benefactors for the new music school. This is thanking Bill S. Preston Esquire and Mr. Ted Theodore Logan for their generous donation that allowed us to open the Wild Stallions Music School. So that is something that I can play. Now to get this to actually work, I'm going to pause this here, and to get this to actually work, what I need to do is need to make sure that I export it properly. So I'm going to go to File, and Export. Oh, that's under Share. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. Okay, Export Movie. Now, when you do this, you have got to use the following settings. I can't emphasize that enough. If you say, well, this is going to be huge. I need to go with an H.264 or something else. Nope, won't work. Sorry. Now, if you want to crop it down and not do a full-size one with transparency, I suppose that you can do it as an H.264 or something else. But if you don't want to do that, you need to do Apple ProRes 4444. Make sure there are four fours in here. And the reason is the last four is the alpha channel. Alpha channel is transparency or gradations of transparency, opaqueness, things like that. So that's really, really important. Let me show you this. Uh, you don't need to go to 4444XQ. 4444 is fine. 422, not so good. 422, 422LT, no bueno. 422 proxy, uh uh. H.264, no good. XD cam, you get the point. It's got to be this one. Also, we're going to go into render. Make sure color plus alpha is chosen. Also, muy importante. Super important that you go with that as well. Because if you don't have the alpha, if you went with color only, then you're not going to get the transparency. So that's also a problem. So here we have the summary. It says about the size it's going to be. This is here, if we go back here, 57 seconds, and look at the size that it thinks it's going to be, 2.42 gig. So this is not an itty-bitty, teeny-tiny thing, but it does have the transparency that we need. Okay, so we're going to click Next. And it will ask us, once it starts... Uh, chugging on this the file name I'm not going to put that in there because I've already done this for you so what we're actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and quit this so no save you save and head on over to ProPresenter 5 here it is okay so in order to do this, you might think that we could put this on top of one of these. Again, no bueno, not good. What we're going to do is we're going to use our little trick and use the props layer. So I'm going to bring up the props dialog. And I've already got one here that I've created. But just to show you how to do this, we go into the editor here. I'm going to move that over out of the way. I'm going to create a new one here, and we start out with this black, blank background, and what we need to do is click this icon right here, add video to slide, and 
what we want to do is select the movie, which in this case is the Wild Stallions movie. Which comes in there and you'll see that it has a white background. The thumbnail hasn't updated yet, but that's fine. So we'll do that. Let's also check this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm coming down with something, so. Okay. We also want the behavior to be loop in this case. What that means is this will continue to loop until we take the prop out. So this is perfectly good because where I stopped the movie was when it went to a blank screen. So it'll go off the screen and then it'll come back on. So that's a good easy way to loop this marquee is to have just at least a little blank screen as the loop point. So there we go, that's good. And now if I shut down the props editor, you'll see that I have two props. I'm actually gonna put in the one that I did because the size of the text was not particularly good. So this, you can see it down here. I should have done bold, I should have done bigger. I, there's a couple of ways I can improve this, but you get the gist of it. And since this is in the props layer, first off, I can shut down the props dialog. I can go to other stuff. I could go to my loop if I hadn't just cleaned off the hard drive and killed all those. I can go to a different song if I want to, let's say I'm honoring certain people. If I wanted to play a foreground uh, video. I could do that. Yeah, here. Here's a foreground. So let me play this foreground video and you'll notice it still works because the prop is on top of everything. Now if I want to make the props go away, I just click the prop with the X icon up here and we're good. So that's a way to get a marquee scrolling text going in ProPresenter 5, which is not a feature that it offers natively. So I hope that helped you. I hope that that's something that you've always wanted to do and you had no idea how you would go about doing it. It's not a perfect solution. I admit it would be better if that was built into ProPresenter 5, but since it's not, that's a way to get around that limitation. If you'd like to know some more hacks and tricks on using ProPresenter 5, by all means, head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash GIFTS, G-I-F-T-S. And there you can find links to all sorts of fun stuff that I'd love to give you absolutely free, um, especially my five ProPresenter 5 tips. So head on over there and you'll also get a free uh, subscription to my email newsletter. So until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.